Are you all set? Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to take a roll call. So if the committee members could please unmute your microphones. And um, then once I've called your name, if you could uh, turn your mute back on. Thank you. Um, I will call the city. And then if you could please identify yourselves. City of Avondale. City of Buckeye. Here, Roger Klingler. City of Chandler. City of El Mirage. Town of Fountain Hills. Here, Dave Trimble. Town of Gilbert. City of Glendale. City of Goodyear. Julie Arendelle here. Maricopa County. Kempton. City of Mesa. Chris Brady is on the is on the call. Uh, City of Peoria. Here, Eric Strunk. City of Phoenix. Ed Zirk here. Town of Queen Creek. Bruce Gardner is here. Thank you. City of Scottsdale. Mark Melmachenko here. City of Surprise. Uh, Dave Colbeck here. City of Tempe. Stephen Methman here. City of Tolleson and ADOT. Here. City of Avondale. Oh, I see you, Gina. Okay. okay. Um, we are, is there anyone from the city of El Mirage? Um, Chair, we're ready to go, sir. Great. Thank you, Pat. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. I'd like to welcome you all to the August 5th, 2020 meeting of the Transit Management Committee and the Rail Management Committee. Um, I hope you have had a little bit of time to take a summer break, relief from the heat, if you will. Um, by way of introductions, I'm Eric Strunk. I'm from the city of Peoria, and I'm looking forward to filling the uh, shoes that John... Josh did uh, over the last year. I'm looking very much looking forward to chairing this group. Um, before we begin, I'd like to uh, officially welcome um, Mark Melanchenko from Scottsdale. Welcome again, Mark. Glad to have you on the on the team here. And uh, if uh, a friendly reminder, uh, we've got a wonderful chat room on on the technology here. So if you have comments that you uh, can't work in early, feel free to type those in and we'll make sure we address those. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Pat um, for any public comments she may have received. Um, we don't have any public comment. Scott, I already have your slides up. So if you could stop sharing the, your screen. Okay, so no public comments. We'll move on to the, the CEO's report. Scott? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let me just change well, Scott, one thing here. Uh, Scott, before you get started, yeah. I already had your slides up and ready to go. Yeah, I got it. Uh, I'm not, change, I'm not uh, screen sharing oh, anymore, am okay. I? Okay, oh, okay, there we go, sorry. Okay. Great, thank you. All right, great. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, want to start out with our commute solutions group. Uh, they launch a new and improved site at uh, sharetheride.com to encourage commuters to use alternative modes, including carpool, vanpool, public transit, teleworking, biking. Uh, this bilingual site uh, features a commute matcher that incorporates data from several sources to provide real-time options and information. 
It also creates incentives and other things uh, uh, to get people to try uh, to commute with either each other other than driving alone. This is a major part of our effort, funded with grants primarily from uh, MAG and from Maricopa County. It's available as a mobile app, and the launch says we transfer over 10,000 users, more than 400 employer websites. So we're very, very pleased that our Tenu Solutions Group is improving their service. Uh, next. I'd like to give you a story about some positive uh, customer service that we've experienced recently. Uh, we received the following comment from a light rail rider from out of town. And a lot of times, uh, you know, we, we focus on the negative and we forget that there's a lot of people out there that appreciate the work that's done in, in your cities and with my staff at Valley Metro. Uh, this, uh, this uh, writer, once again, from out of town said, hello, I just want to take a moment. Uh, to thank the Phoenix region for providing the light rail system. It's surely tax dollars well spent. Along with the exception of transportation comes exceptional customer service, which was provided by Don McGuire and Kyle Angelini. Their helpfulness was above and beyond my expectations. They helped us immediately when we approached the station and guided us through the payment process. They even took the time to walk us to our car rental address in these times of uncertainty. It was a relief to have the help and guidance of these two outstanding individuals, please honor them for the outstanding employees they are. You are lucky to have them on your team. The reason why I want to share this is that all of you on your staff uh, have uh, literally thousands of our uh, employees that uh, haven't had the luxury of telecommuting and they've been out there uh, on the front lines uh, continuing to provide stellar service. Uh, this is just an example of two of our Valley Metro employees that have done that. I, I thank uh, all of our staff, all of your staff, uh, for continuing to, uh, to to be out there and taking care of people uh, in, as this customer said, these troubling times. We have some milestones we want to go over. Uh, we have the first uh, a couple of milestones for the Tempe streetcar, which is about 85% uh, completed now. Uh, the first passenger, uh, the, the the rail stop uh, along the light rail, there or along the light rail, along the streetcar, there'll be 14 of them. Uh, the first one was being installed at the corner of 6th and Mill in downtown. Uh, there's, uh, we're, we're moving very quickly and rapidly to complete that system. And also, just this past Tuesday, uh, we finalized the final piece of track on the, uh, on the streetcar. Uh, installed it over the weekend and, uh, and uh, put the final concrete in yesterday. We'll continue working on, uh, on rail stops, finalizing the systems, electrical, uh, moving toward a physical uh, uh, completion of the system uh, by the end of this year, hopefully. Although uh, COVID-related delays in our uh, bus, in our bus, in our uh, rail car manufacturing plant, have delayed the delivery of the streetcars themselves. So uh, uh, that will be uh, that will be moving toward a probably a mid or uh, late fall uh, uh, or fall opening for service. The next thing is, I know all of you are aware of the uh, of the. Um, uh, the incident that happened with the Union Pacific uh, uh, frail, uh, frail <laughs> freight freight rail line and bridge uh, headed over Salt River and Tempe Town Lake. Uh, these are some photos. Uh, you can see how close our light rail bridge is to the actual uh, derailment. Uh, so light rail service was uh, obviously uh, disrupted. As a matter of fact, we were uh, we were shut down for about almost two days from crossing the bridge. Uh, you know, this was a time when a lot of people pulled together. One of, uh, certainly the, the city of Tempe, uh, uh, fire and, and uh, medical department, public safety. I think all the regional cities pulled together. We even had a fire boat come in from Peoria, from off of Lake Pleasant to help fight the fire. So this truly was a regional response. We had a few people on our, on our staff that really uh, went beyond the call of duty, working late hours because uh, we didn't know what damage there might be to the bridge itself and to uh, uh, important components on the bridge, such as our OCS and, and electronics and other things. So uh, our team was out there uh, from the moment the accident happened, clear through the weekend to make sure that uh, our bridge was uh, and structure was, was sound, which it was. Uh, I would like to thank a few people, uh, Dave Zebro for helping coordinate the CCTV uh, footage comp compilation. Uh, we found that our trains that had gone through um, just a little bit of sidebar information, we actually have a train that passed over the bridge right about the time that the that the accident happened. And we do have some footage that we're providing to the NTSB and others that actually shows the accident going on. Not real, real nice, but uh, things like that. It's a, it's a real um, 
challenge to pull that video from multiple trains that went through about the same time. Trevor Collin, Wednesday night, Sunday morning, in the city of Phoenix for getting bridge inspectors out there on a moment's notice. Scott Wisner, our boss operations uh, uh, head, and Rick White, who heads up our maintenance of way. All of our uh, rail operations and supervisors and bus operations, uh, and everybody just came together. It truly was a great regional response, and we thank them for that. We also want you to let you know that uh, uh, beginning with uh, with uh, this meeting, I believe, uh, we will uh, begin uh, 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 um, streaming our, our meetings on YouTube. This is to hopefully free up some of the WebEx, uh, Zoom type of, uh, of, of traffic. So if you are not participating in the meeting, uh, you'll be you'll be invited to join in on YouTube and free up the actual WebEx for uh, participants so we can uh, clear the bandwidth and, and uh, not have problems with the uh, people going in and out. And finally, here's our calendar uh, for the next uh, uh, couple months. So we will have an audit and finance subcommittee next week. And as you can see, uh, clear through September, we will have the uh, meetings as scheduled and they will, until further notice, continue to be on uh, WebEx and streamed on YouTube. So, uh, Ms. Chair, that's uh, my report. Thank you very much. Thank you for that report, Scott. Do any of the members have any questions of Scott? On the executive report. Hi, Mr. Chair. It's uh, Stephen Methvin. I'd just like to make a comment. Sure thing. Thank you. Hey, uh, Scott, uh, Mr. Smith. Uh, thank you for those uh, those uh, uh, recognition. Uh, thank you for the recognition of your staff that was out at the train derailment. I just want to echo, you know, the great job that Dave and Trevor and Scott and Rick and also throw into the mix, you know, all of your your uh, other support staff, but Adrian Reese, who was out there uh, helping us and uh, and and uh, guiding us through some very tough days for our city. We've, we've never obviously seen anything like that. So thank you for all that uh, Valley Metro did to support uh, the city of Tempe and uh, Union Pacific. And then I just want to, uh, regarding streetcar, just give uh, a, a big thanks to uh, Valley Metro for the work Luis Mota, I know we're not all the way done, uh, but Luis and Dad and Clevenger have been awesome for our city to work with. So I just wanna give some kudos to those two gentlemen too on the work they do with the city of Tempe and getting you know, a very large uh, uh, project underway. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Stephen. If I could, Mr. Chair, I, I, I am so I'm sure. very sad. Uh, thank you for bringing up Adrian. Adrian Ruiz, the head of our safety and security, was our point person on that whole deal. And literally, I don't know if she slept for about four days. So uh, thank you for bringing her up and all the team. Uh, the, as a matter of fact, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, sleep, I, I believe, in the Reese household because Adrian's husband, Greg, is a uh, uh, Tempe fire chief. So uh, uh, we had a coordinated effort, and uh, and uh, luckily there was uh, uh, there was only physical damage, no significant uh, human uh, injuries uh, that that I'm aware of. Uh, so we just thank the, uh, the Tempe and the entire region for coming together to to handle a very very uh, difficult situation in a very professional manner. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. We'll move on to the third item, COVID-19 update. And again, it's for information only. I'll turn it over to Mr. Smith if you have any comments. Over to uh, Jim Hilliard, who will give us a, a COVID update. Jim? Great. Thank you, Scott, Mr. Chairman, members. Um, the only COVID update we've had since uh, our last meeting um, is a provider who was impacted by some COVID uh, illnesses. Um, and for more information on that, I'll hand it off to Ray Abraham. Thank you, Jim. Mr. Chair, members of the EMC. Um, our, our provider for the AHO service is a very small provider. They have about 10 or 12 operators. They've been struck with about four of their operators being off due to COVID related illnesses. As a result of that, we had to reduce their service levels. So we had to reduce a full trip in the morning and a full trip in the afternoon. So long trips, they're several hour trips. Um, but there was just no other alternative. They had no operators. There was no way for them to get folks in the work and trained on time. So we just had to endure the shortage of operators and reduce the service levels a bit. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Are there any questions of the uh, group? Great. Anything else, Mr. Hilliard? Oh, 
Sir, we have one uh, COVID-related agenda I have late for my meeting for the offices. We'll take that up as a normal item. Thank you. We'll, we'll go ahead and do that. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to the minutes. Uh, do any of the members have any comments, uh, additions, deletions uh, regarding the minutes? All right, hearing none, I'd like to request a motion and a second to approve the June 3rd, 2020 joint TMP RMT meeting minutes. Mr. Chair, Stephen Methen yeah. with the City of Tempe. I move to approve the minutes. Thank you. Do it second. Zerker second. Thank you. All in favor, I guess? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. If we can if we can just ask if there's any no's that will help. Um we won't have to hear everyone say aye. <laughs> sure just, thing. Just ask if there's any no's and we'll we'll assume approval. Thank you, Pat. We'll go ahead and do that. It sounds like uh, the minutes have passed. So we'll move on to item number five. And that's the DMS facility services contract change order. And again, I'd like to call on Mr. Smith to work through that. Thank you. And and Pat, you're going to tell me somehow on my computer screen, I lost the agenda. So uh, oh. um, this so is primarily this is go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say um, it's the DMS facility services contract and uh, Jim Hilliard. Um, this is his item. Okay, so we'll turn it over to Jim. I'm going to look here now and try and pull the agenda back up on my computer screen. Jim, take it from here. Thanks, Scott, Mr. Chair, members. Um, as you're aware, Valley Metro has a contract with DMS facility services to conduct uh, cleaning of its light rail vehicles. Um, in response to the pandemic, we've needed to step up um, cleaning um, at our administrative facilities to provide for the safety of staff. Um, the most cost effective and, and uh, timely way um, of doing that um, is to execute a change order to, to our existing contract with DMS for them to provide two services. Uh, the first is for them to do uh, the same type of disinfected fogging they're currently conducting um, on light rail vehicles. Um, at our administrative sites once a month. Um, that's a two-step process. The first uh, disinfectant, the second lays down on uh, impermeable surfaces a uh, durable disinfecting residue um, to use to, uh, to disinfect over the course of uh, several weeks. Um, the second service is the addition of a day hours uh, custodian um, to, uh, to go around uh, wiping down areas that um, that aren't easily treated with that uh, disinfecting gravity, things like um, conference room, chair arm, uh, door handles, et cetera, um, at our major administrative facilities. Um, the, uh, this service will be provided by DMS for the remainder of its contract, which is essentially five months through uh, the end of uh, December 2020. Um, we're currently conducting um, a request for proposals to resolicit the entire facility cleaning service. These services will be included as an option in that contract. And so if there's a need to continue them um, into the new year, we'll have the ability to uh, uh, through that contract. Um, the estimated cost for the next um, five months is just under $203,000. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Hilliard. Are there any questions of the uh, board? Zed Zerker in Phoenix, just a question about source of funds. Uh, that's a good question. As I prefer to call for the particular color of money on this. Uh, this is primarily covered by CARES Act money. Thank you. That makes good sense. I'd move approval. Is there a second? All those opposed? I didn't hear who seconded. <laughs> who is the second? Thank you. Thank you. Great. So we have a first and a second. Are there any opposed? All right. Hearing none, uh, we'll go ahead and move on to uh, item number six, implementation of new customer service hours. 
And this is an item for information only, so no action is is required of the committee. Um, before we go into the presentation, does hopefully everyone's had a chance to read the packet. Are there any any questions, or would the committee like to hear the presentation? Okay, hearing hearing none. Um, We'll go ahead and move to quarterly reports. And again, this is an item uh, for information only. And I'd like to again pass it over to Mr. Smith uh, to go through the quarterly reports. Mr. Smith. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, generally, this is an item. If you have any quote question on any specific report or any item in the report, we're more than happy to answer it. Otherwise, there is no actual presentation related to this. So uh, we have staff on hand to answer any Great. questions you might have. Are there any questions of the committee members? Okay, we'll keep moving along here. Now we're on number eight, travel expenditures and solicitations. Again, it's an informational item. Are there any questions on any of the items that you've had a chance to review? All right. Well, we are now at number nine, uh, future agenda items, requests, and report on current events. Are there any special requests of the committee members, or would any of the committee members like to share anything related to transit, transportation in their, in their area? Okay. All right, with that, um, we more or less have concluded the, the meeting, joint meeting. Um, the next meeting of the TMC RMC is for next Wednesday, uh, September 2nd, 2020 at 11 a.m. So make sure you have that in your calendars. I'm sure you'll get the reminder from Pat and the team. And with that, Pat, I think uh, we adjourn this part of the meeting and we move on to the management committee meeting, if I'm correct. Um, yes, that's correct. Super. Um, we'll go ahead and convene that meeting. Um, Pat, do you need to take roll call vote on this or are we good? No, sir. We're, we are set to go. All right. So we'll just kind of do that agenda as well. Um, did you receive any public comments? Uh, no. No, we're re we can proceed. We don't okay. have any public comment. All right. Super. Um, what we'd like to do is uh, approve the minutes from the June 3rd, 2020 TMC meeting. They presented been presented to you ahead of time. If you have any corrections or comments, uh, we'll take those now. If not, if I could uh, have a, a motion and a, a second to accept those meeting minutes, that'd be wonderful. Ed Zerker, a motion to approve. Is there a second? Reed Captain, I'll second it. Great. All those opposed? All right, super. We've got the meetings, minutes taken care of. Uh, we move on to item number three now, bus inspection services contract award. And I would like to call on Scott Smith uh, for this particular item and your staff. So Scott, if you wouldn't mind uh, sharing the information on this, that'd be wonderful. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is an activity that uh, we uh, contract out for, and it includes a variety of different inspections that we have to uh, provide on our buses at various stages in uh, both acquisition and operation. And I'm going to turn it over now to Ray Abraham, who will uh, explain briefly uh, this uh, contract and uh, the request that we will be uh, wanting your recommendation to approve to forward to the boards. Ray. Thank you, Scott. Mr. Chair, members of the TMC, as Scott said, this is a contract that we have been um, doing for several years. We have a third party do random inspections of our buses. It's just basically a audit of our, our, our contractor's performance. We also use this same contractor to be our representative at the various factories of our new bus builds. So again, the present contract expires this October. We went out with an RFP. We only received one responsive um, proposal, and so that turned out to be the incumbent. And we're asking your approval to enter into a contract with them 
for the next seven years, five years, I believe, with a two year option. Um, I would be happy to answer any questions if you have. Great, thank you. Are there any questions of the committee? Okay, hearing no questions, uh, I'll need a motion and a second to forward this to the board uh, for authorization for the CEO to enter into a seven year contract to improve the inspection services. Are there any in, in opposition to this? I, I need somebody for the motion in the second. Uh, I'm first. sorry, sorry. Okay. Approval. <laughs> second by Chris. Thank you. Are there? Mr. Zucker, was that you who made the motion? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Are you in opposition? Thank you. We'll move forward to the board for consideration. Uh, the next item, number four, recommended October 2020 transit service changes. I believe, Pat, you sent out a, a rise table to the, the group. Uh, um, and it basically uh, highlighted uh, Pogo in, in Peoria. We, we asked to kind of stand down on that. And uh, if there are any questions of the group on any of the changes, I think Joe Gregory is on hand to answer any questions. So I'd like to throw it open to the group if they had any questions. Okay, if there are no questions on the transit service changes for October 2020, uh, I'd like to request a motion and a second to recommend to the board those changes. Do I have a, a motion and a second for that? Um, second, Julie Goodyear. So we have a first and a second. Very good. Are there any opposed? Okay, seeing none, we'll advance that to the board for final consideration. The next item we have at number five, bus operator protective barriers for fixed route bus fleet contract award. And I think Mr. Smith alluded to that in the first agenda. Um, it's COVID related. And I'd like to call on Scott Wisner to uh, talk through the, the concept there and answer any questions of the committee. Scott. Thank you. So as probably everybody can imagine, we've had a lot of challenges uh, since COVID-19 hit this area. And the two primary challenges were passenger boardings and, and fare collections. That was the first things we had to deal with. And done a lot of things to to try to improve that process and deal with that situation. We've taken a lot of measures to try to protect our operators, as you can imagine. This is a very uh, serious virus and something we've never experienced before. A couple of the first things we did was rear door boarding and the lighting, passenger limits. Then recently we implemented face coverings requirements on buses and trains. And then um, we also started installing uh, early on a barrier behind the operator approximately six feet behind the operator. This plastic barrier was designed to uh, protect the operator from air airborne viruses from coming up forward into the, uh, the driver area and the cabin area. And then most recently we installed a plastic curtain around the driver in the uh, what we call the operator cockpit. I'll show you some images of that here in a minute. Next slide, please. So I mentioned fare collection was a major challenge because we do rear door boardings. And so that remains a, a problem. Um, we're mostly doing it on the honor system where people are supposed to have their fare. Um, so that that's created some problems as far as people boarding and riding for long periods of time. So that remains a problem we've had. Um, and one of the problems we also have is these curtains really don't protect the operator from any type of physical assault or unwanted intrusion up into the cockpit area we've had several breaches of that uh, that barrier that we have in place right now. And uh, those plastic barriers are really hard to maintain as far as cl in cleanliness and trying to make sure those are disinfected on a daily basis. So those are some challenges. 
So we've got a short-term solution. This is the images of the plastic curtain we put up. You can see in the open position and then in the closed position. And uh, this should allow us at some point to re resume front door boarding and ferret collection, but right now we're, we're not there yet. So right now it's just installed and the operator can use it as needed. Next slide, please. We've been looking for a long-term solution. Uh, we've been working with the city of Phoenix and uh, also studying what's happening across the country and looking at best practices. And a lot of the large transit agencies throughout the country are now installing some type of a barrier. Typically it's either a plexiglass or it's a more rugged type of barrier that we're here to present to you today. Uh, so in conjunction with that, the city of Phoenix and, and Valley Metro issued a joint RFP process to purchase a more uh, durable barrier, um, dwarf style barrier. Uh, it's a firm fixed price contract, and then each uh, agency will enter in, into its own contract with the selected vendor. We did receive two proposals during that process. However, uh, only one of them was deemed um, uh, responsive. And so after the evaluation process was completed, Complete Coachworks was selected as the firm whose proposal offers the best value to, to us and to the city of Phoenix. This is a picture on the left of that type of a barrier. You can see it's got a rugged door. It's got um, glass that extends beyond the driver area. Um, so this is really um, a, a long-term solution. This, this barrier uh, should last the lifetime of the bus, which is generally 12 years. Um, it does have power windows. Uh, the, slot, the smaller window you can see on that is can slide up and down. So if the driver did have to have a conversation with somebody. They can roll the window down and have that conversation and then roll it back up. It does have anti reflective glare and, and laminated safety glass. And, um, and it does not uh, impede the driver's um, view at all. So it's a, it's a purpose built barrier for this type of situation. It, it also has some unique features. It's got two variable speed fans. As you know, it's very hot. And our buses can uh, have some high, high temperatures inside during the summer. So those fans will keep that cockpit area, you know, ventilated and cooler for the operator. It does have um, some rugged latch mechanisms to, so they won't rattle. And then the door can be locked from the inside, which would prevent intrusion from anybody from coming inside uh, that's not um, allowed to be in there. Uh, it's pretty simple to install these barriers after the fact. Uh, it's, it's basically two brackets, one in the ceiling, one in the floor. This is a picture of that. It also allows us, uh, our, our maintenance teams, to be able to remove the door easily so that if they have to do any work in that area, they can get the door out of the way. So the picture on the left here is when the door is fully closed. You can see the, the windows basically see through. Um, and it's just like a car door, basically. And then you can see the image on the right. Uh, the door that's when it's open and the operator enters and then pulls it shut and then locks it. The project is uh, slated to take about 60 days to get started after we award. Um, to take that time to manufacture the doors and then deliver um, a substantial quantity of those to our locations. And then our contractor can install up to 36 barriers per week. So that's a pretty pretty fast timeline. And so we hope to be able to get through the fleet fairly quickly. The installs will occur at nighttime so we don't have to down any buses when we're not operating. And then we, we estimate that it'll take about eight months of a timeline to complete the installations, both at Valley Metro and the city of Phoenix. Cost of the project is approximately $1.9 million. That's, this includes estimated sales tax and a contract contingency of $94,000. And this is our recommendation to award this contract to complete coach works for an amount not to exceed 1.9 million, dollars Be happy to answer any questions you may have. Great, thank you for that presentation, Scott. Do any of the uh, committee members have any questions? 
Uh, Mr. Chair, if I could once again. Ed, Ed Zerker in Phoenix. Thank you. Go ahead, Ed. Yeah, I was just curious about, again, about source of funds. Yeah, I was going to say this is once again CARES Act uh, covered. Uh, uh, you know, our, our CARES Act money is somewhat fungible with our operating, but this is uh, uh, what CARES Act came, uh, came through. So we'll be uh, utilizing that for this, uh, this uh, project. Excellent. Thank you so much. I move approval. Is there a second? This is Dave and surprise second it. Any opposed? Okay, thank you all. We'll move this one on to the board as well for their consideration. Uh, we're now on item number six, future agenda items. Um, any special request and or any reports on current events in any of your respective areas, uh, feel free to ask or, or share. All right, I'm not hearing anything. So guess what? I think that concludes uh, both of these meetings and our next meeting will be on Wednesday, September 2nd. And we'll start that at 11 a.m. I think Pat now will adjourn this meeting and hand the call over to Chris who will uh, run the bill portion of it. Sound good? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you all for being here and we'll see you next month. Take care. Mr. Brady, whenever you're ready to start, we can start um, uh, all of the people. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are. Hey, hey, this is Stephen Pong. You're showing your age if you're talking about Pong. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Chair, I moved to a, I, it sounds like someone else did. I moved to second. Okay. Did you hear anybody else? Um, no, I didn't. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought somebody else had, so I moved to approve then. This is that okay. all second. Great. So Stephen approves at uh, second. Uh, any one who dissents, let us know otherwise we'll consider approval. Very good. Now we'll move to uh, consent agenda. Uh, uh, items are on your agenda. 3A through 3C. Members who would like to remove these items from the consent agenda. No. Re request a motion and a second to approve the consent Ed, I'll move to approve. Steven. All right. Ed, for motion for approval and second by Steven. Uh, if there's anyone opposed, please speak up. Otherwise, we'll consider your sign approval. We're now talking for the central extension downtown hub design amended funding agreement. Thank you, Chris. I'll turn it over to Wolf Grote, who will explain briefly uh, what this item is. Wolf. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, 
This item is to amend the existing funding agreement with the City of Phoenix for our South Central Extension Downtown Hub Project. Uh, and more specifically, the purpose is to add $350 million uh, of Phoenix funds uh, to our existing funding agreement. And that's, uh, most of that is to cover uh, the funding that is needed uh, on the project. And these are, fun that are for, excuse me, these are um, items that occur prior to receiving federal reimbursement and that there's going to be a lot of that. And that's uh, 330 million of the request is for that. And, and generally speaking, it can take one to three years after the costs are incurred before we get reimbursement. So this really will help our cash flow uh, on this project. And uh, so it'll be important for us to have those Phoenix funds uh, that they will eventually get reimbursed for uh, once the federal funds come in. A small portion of the funds here are going for adjustments uh, to costs that Valley Metro will incur directly. Uh, there was there were some uh, greater costs initially that were going to the city of Phoenix. Uh, they're gonna be spending less. Uh, Valley Metro is gonna be spending more and in, in, in directly. And uh, therefore, um, you know, Valley Metro will need to have those additional funds to carry out those project items. In the end, there is no impact to the city of Phoenix as far as the overall amount that they will spend on the project. So we are um, seeking uh, the approval to move this forward to the board uh, and for an agreement in the amount of $350,000, or excuse me, the uh, amendment of the agreement uh, for an additional $350 million. And of course, this will all be um, pending city council action. They'll, they'll also have to take action on this. That's all I have on that. Are there any questions? Mr. Chairman, yes, um, I will. I will move approval, but I do want to say a couple things beforehand. Um, it's and I know people are working on this, so it's not. I'm not saying something isn't happening that that I want. I just want to make a point of emphasis as uh, the COVID has um, affected. Uh, the daytime population of downtown Phoenix significantly, there's an opportunity, I think, to, uh, to, to do a lot of invasive construction work that it would normally drive people out of their minds, but there's not a lot of people to be driven out of their minds by it. So every opportunity we can find to really get that invasive work done now uh, would be much appreciated and, and uh, encouraged. For example, the arena is closed to activity, both because it's under construction and because there's no in-person events happening. That could stretch for some period of time here. There is some thought that potentially the NBA season next year could, could possibly be done without fans in the stands or without significant numbers of fans in the stands. So it's an opportunity in the downtown hub to really do some invasive work where we're not disrupting uh, activities at the arena particularly or at the baseball stadium this year so just uh, hope we can take every opportunity to get the invasive work done that will disrupt arena and baseball traffic now so that when fans come back it's either in 21 first half of 21 or second half of 21 we can minimize the impact on them but with that i'll move approval yeah. i second his motion all right, so we have a second uh, for this item four. Uh, is there anyone who is opposed? Not item, thank you very much. I would, uh, I, I don't know if Wolf was gonna say something. I, I, I'd be interested in knowing a little bit of how the staff views the opportunities for oh. uh, accelerating downtown hub work now that it's yeah. passed and everything just. Well, he's given yeah. permission to wrap up his downtown as early as possible. Okay. Yeah, I, I hear it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Ed. Yeah, we definitely we are we are very aware of our opportunities. We've been taking every opportunity with our contractor already to uh, to move forward on work within the downtown. I know they've they've uh, moved forward on several different items, uh, utility items that that are very disruptive in downtown and and we'll be continuing to look for opportunities to 
accelerate that work so that we don't disrupt things as much when uh, when people really start to come back downtown. We recognize that opportunity. Yeah, thanks for that comment. Thank you, Wolf, if I, I might appreciate it. Ed, well, there's one really graphic example of where that's already taking place. For example, right now, Fifth Street is shut down uh, to do the major work in Fifth Street. Uh, when the, when that was first planned, that was never meant to be shut down because we had to coordinate with the baseball uh, traffic. And uh, since there is no baseball traffic and the convention center working with us, since there are no, uh, there are no activities at the South Center, we've been able to completely shut Fifth Street down and accelerate the work in that area. And that's directly a result of the uh, cancellation of activities of both the both Chase Field and the convention center. So we've been working closely with them. That's just a probably the most graphic example of opportunities we've had to change our work schedule and workflow uh, because of the impacts of COVID. It's a great example, Scott. Thank you for that. I we really appreciate it. Very good. Uh, 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 we'll continue to item. This is a Contract amendment. Mr. Smith. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, this is a major milestone for this project and I'll uh, as we uh, as we put in an order, an actual order for the vehicles that will be used to uh, to serve the South Central downtown hub uh, project. So I'll turn it over to Wolf to uh, explain it a little bit. Wolf. Yep. Again, uh, um, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee, as Scott mentions, this is the. This, the purpose of this item is to amend the uh, a contract with Siemens Mobility so that we can purchase those additional vehicles uh, for the South Central project. Uh, just a little bit of background, uh, Siemens currently has a contract for 11 light rail vehicles which are being delivered as we speak. Three of those vehicles are already in our shop and we'll be getting eight more uh, before the year is out. The contract also includes two options uh, for additional vehicles over the next, uh, I believe it's over the next five years or so. And uh, that um, we are at the point now where we need to exercise the first of those options, and that will be to acquire these 14 vehicles for the South Central Downtown Hub project. And all the costs that we're incurring here to buy these vehicles are in the project budget um, for that project. One of the things I, I will mention uh, just as a background piece here, is that we currently have 50 light rail vehicles in operation today uh, with the added vehicles that we will receive uh, this year, as well as the vehicles that are coming as part of the South Central project. We will have 75 light rail vehicles in our fleet in 2024. And this, uh, this will be needed, these, these vehicles will be needed to run a two line system that I think some of you are aware, maybe all of you are aware that will will happen when the South Central project opens. And we will have one line running from East Mesa into downtown Phoenix, uh, all the way from Gilbert Road uh, to downtown Phoenix. And the other line will be from baseline in South Central all the way to Metro Center. And the, the fleet that we're acquiring, the 75 vehicles total, is needed to uh, handle our peak needs, also to make sure we have adequate spares, uh, handle special events, and also gap trains, and these are vehicles that are out on the line that are uh, out there for emergency needs. So uh, what we're looking for today is authorization to go to the board um, to um, for a $78.5 million amount, uh, approximately as identified specifically in your board memo. And this will go not only for the 14 vehicles, but also for spare parts and training and in addition to that, we, that includes the 5% contingency that we'll hold for any uh, necessary uh, uh, changes that occur during the development of those vehicles. With that, that's, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Wolf. Any questions for Wolf or Mr. Smith? I, this is Ed, I do have one. I'm curious how we allocate costs of vehicles across the system as compared to project by project, if there's any system we use in that allocation. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, Ed, the, um, we, well, first of all, all of our vehicles, um, with the exception of the three that we purchased for the Gilbert Road extension, 
uh, all of the vehicles are 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 matched or locally matched with you know f with our federal funds by by uh, our regional funds, our PTF funds that we have, um, and yeah, each each project that comes along, you know, we assess what additional vehicles are needed, and and then uh, included in that in that project. Um, you know, there were a couple of projects along the way where we already had enough vehicles; we didn't have to purchase at that time. But now, as we move forward for for South Central, there the need for 14. Uh, we also, uh, as we continue to look at uh, Northwest Extension, um, we do not need additional vehicles for that. With with the 75 vehicles we'll have in place, that will be sufficient to also operate the Northwest Extension. So we will not add any additional vehicles for that project. When we our next extension that we do, we will have to acquire additional vehicles. Okay. Thank you. Huh? Any other questions? Uh, okay. We do this on our correct back. I correct. Let me do it. I'm assuming you. Yes. Yes, sir. This is good. I'll move, I'll move uh, approval. Okay. Uh, for approval, we need yes. a second. This is Stephen I second. Stephen for the second. Uh, as always, uh, noted, uh, in opposition, we'll assume everyone is in approval for this item. Thank you. Item six is uh, to request if there's any agenda item for future meetings or any information uh, that's needed for the RMC right at this time. Much. Uh, just a reminder for our next meeting is Wednesday, September 2nd, 2020 at 11 a.m. Otherwise, it's adjourned. Yes, sir. We're all set to go. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you.